I think we might have a fail. Or is it? All right guys, it's been 30 days since I poured this original dry pour slab. So it's got a full 30 day cure on this. So today, we are going to drive on it. We are going to cut into it. We're gonna drill into it. We're going to drive some anchors into it. And these are all suggestions made by you guys. So let's find out together if this whole dry pour thing is a good thing or a bad thing. All right, let's dive into our first test, which is gonna be driving on it. Uh, I'm gonna be driving on it with a Ford F-150, so it's gonna be a considerable amount of weight. Now, I do understand that since I'll only be able to get one tire on this, that it's only gonna be basically a quarter of the weight, but I feel like that's still good enough for me to answer the question that is it strong enough to take that kind of weight. But if this first test fails, I don't know that there's gonna be enough left for us to test our other scenarios, but let's go ahead and give it a try. Doesn't look cracked to me. Let's let's drive back and forth over it a few times just to make sure. I finally got it to crack. Damn, I really wanted that to work. But what you didn't see was the other hundred times I went back and forth on this slab because I kept knocking my cameras over. So I had to keep setting the cameras back up so I could get the shot all over again. And I, I'm most certainly not doing my lawn any favors, but it's all for you guys. It's all for you guys. Before we move on to the next test, I just wanted to take a minute to tell you about this new book that I read called Chasing After Justice. It's written by my very good friend, Monty McKinnon. He also has a YouTube channel, Monty McKinnon Guitars. Check him out. And it's about this detective that is trying to take down this drug cartel. It's a very good crime thriller. It's got explosions, gunfights, hidden passageways, intense interrogations, snipers, warehouse raids and booby traps. I also learned a couple of things. Did you know that BOLO stands for be on the lookout? Also, I did not know that COP stood for constable on patrol. I didn't know that. So I'm going to leave a link in the description below to get your very own copy of Chasing After Justice. I I'm not just telling you to read this because he's my friend. It, it really was a good book and I do highly recommend it. <sighs> well, we're not gonna let this deter us from moving on to the next test, which is drilling into it. A lot of you really wanted me to drill into this and see what happens. So we're gonna use a half inch masonry bit. So let's crack on. <laughs> get it? Crack on. No surprises so far. 
uh, looks pretty good. There's no, no cracks going right to the side, which is what I thought was going to happen. Seem to be pretty, pretty clean holes. Well, drilling holes into the slab went fairly well. Uh, they didn't crack right off to the side like I thought they were going to, but why would we be drilling holes into a cement slab? Maybe to build a wall and attach it to the slab, right? Maybe you're making a small shed or a small outbuilding, or maybe you're planning on doing a lean-to. So, which brings us to our third test, which would be using some sort of anchor or masonry bolt. A very popular demand were these redhead sleeve anchors and a Tapcon. These are both half inch, three inches long. Let's see how it goes. They both went in there really well and I heard absolutely no crunching or cracking. I know this isn't a very good test. I, I, I don't know, guys. Come on. <coughs> my wall, my wall's gonna fall apart. Oh shit! <laughs> my wall's gonna fall apart before <laughs> it comes out of the bottom cell. So. <laughs> I feel like this is a good time to tell you that I am not a professional and I am not a scientist. I'm just an idiot with a camera. So don't try this at home. Gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. Why are you still subscribed to this channel? I don't know. All right, this is after removing the Tapcon on this side. This is after removing the sleeve, which this is, this is in there. I can't get this out, but maybe. but still no cracks. That's pretty promising. <sighs> the last test is the most requested test out of all of them, which would be to cut into the slab and let's, let's see what's in the middle. Let's see what's really going on inside, which I don't even know that I have to cut into it at this point since we have a crack clean across the middle. <laughs> so let's just use a crowbar. That is, that is definitely cured all the way through to the bottom. Well, here's from the side. I am not seeing any evidence of powder. And this is the, this is the very bottom right here. Again, all cured. All right, so what did we do today? So first, we drove on it, failed epically, but if you remember in the original video, I did not put metal reinforcement in this because the Cajun Country Live-In video that I was referring to in their first video, they did not put any metal reinforcement. Yes, I know that they put metal reinforcement in the second video that they did, but it's got me wondering, would this have stood up to not only simply driving on it, but beating the crap out of it the way I did by going back over on it several times on such a small slab? Drilling into it, I think it completely passed that. We drilled holes that were only an inch and three quarters away from the side, the weakest point, and there was no cracking. We were able to attach and bolt down a bottom sill. We were also able to drive in not only a sleeve anchor, but a Tapcon. Both of those anchors tend to put a lot of force outwards on a small hole like that. And I feel like it passed that test as well. 
Would this slab be able to stand up to the sheer force of a very tall eight foot wall and with a roof on top of it? I don't know, but I'm inclined to believe that it will. So with that being said, I am convinced enough to where I am actually going to build a lean-to on the back of the new shed. It's going to be a four foot by 10 foot slab. The walls are gonna be seven feet tall and it's going to have a metal roof on top. I'm also convinced enough of this method to where I'm going to be making a circular patio area with, well, I don't wanna to give too much away, but I'm gonna be doing videos on all this stuff. But so far I feel that dry pour absolutely has its place. There are the people over here that feel that this is, this is just not going to work. This is the lazy way to go about it. Why would you do, why wouldn't you just end up mixing it anyway? Seems like a lot more work. You got the other people over here that, hey man, this is easy. I, I've been doing this for years, haven't had an issue yet. The Blue Jays are very vocal today. You also have the people that are, are saying the instructions for dry pour are right on the back of the bag. That, that's true, but that's, that's for post holes, completely different. Someone had this great comment and it stuck with me and they said that I think that everybody's missing the point. The point is that this is just another tool to put in our tool belt and I 100% agree with that. It may not be right for all projects, but this is definitely, I think this is definitely a tool that you can use in certain situations. As soon as I heard about this dry pour method, I absolutely was on the side that, oh, that, there's no way that can work. You can't mix it thoroughly enough. There's no way it's gonna have the strength. But when I saw so many people having success with it, I, I had to go into this with an open mind and see for myself. I truly do think that the dry pour method has its place. Right now, I'm only willing to say that it's only for smaller projects, but if this is a project where you need a slab or you need to build on this within a week or even sooner, then absolutely not. This is not the way to go. This is definitely not for fast projects. That I can 100% say for sure. So those are my thoughts. Still got some more tests that I'm in the middle of doing. Got lots of testing going on in the background and a lot of these tests are suggestions by you guys because this subject is just much too compelling. There's so much more that I want to know, but I promise to keep the cool projects coming. Got so many cool projects planned for this summer and going into winter. I can't wait to show you. So keep those comments coming and we'll see you in the next video.